Hey everybody. Welcome back to the homestead. That's Mr. Andy. I don't really know how I want to start this one, but I just kind of felt it on my heart. I'm not a big YouTuber. I guess this is more for my kids and my family than anything. You know, some days are just hard, and some days things just don't go right. I got up this morning, and, well, I'll start with last week. <clears throat> last week, my rooster, I mean, they don't live forever, but my rooster of seven years, and my buddy that followed me around everywhere, I raised him up from a little chick, and he died. And I was sad, but I kind of knew it was coming. You know, he was slowing down and having some issues, and I had actually decided to call him this fall anyway, but the fact that he left... Suddenly, well, I knew it was, it's hard to explain. I knew he wasn't doing good, but I didn't think he was going to die. Anyway, he died. And I was bumming. And I'm still bumming. It's not the same without him. He was the master of this chicken domain for seven years. And I've got a couple other roosters, but they're not the same. Anyway, fast forward to this week. And I had, and just today alone, I've had a mama cat give birth to one dead kitten and guess what I had to do the kitten was feet first and I had to pull that little kitten out of her body and I felt terrible and she's not had any more I think that's her only one and she's just just so sad and I am too I come up to the garden this morning and something's attacking and destroying my sunflowers it's not a bird it's not normal I've been doing this for a long time I have no clue what it is unless it's a giant crow or something but it is just ripping just shredding the stems okay that's another bad thing for the day so I get to feeling low but I'm not gonna let it bother me because you know sometimes in homestead life things are tough life in general things can be tough I go to take my birds they've been grounded for the last week or so for getting in the neighbor's property and laying eggs so they were all in their coop and I go to take them a treat of some leftover banana muffins and stuff that I had made. And I look over and my turkey hen Helen was dead. That one was tough because you know Ellen and Handy, or Helen and Andy, I can't even say the names. <clears throat> if you watch any of our videos, they're in there and they're like our mascots and they're my buddies and they, they follow me around like a dog. Andy's right there. And uh, I didn't know it. My son saw her this morning and she was alive. And he didn't realize it, but he said she was in the corner of the chicken house when he opened it this morning. And she <clears throat> she was stuck there, he said. I think she was injured. And he helped her out. <clears throat> and so when we picked her up and looked at her, she had some damage to her side and her leg. So I'm not sure if a predator got to her or if bearing Andy's weight while he mated with her got to her. I don't know, but she had injuries and she's gone. I don't know how I'm going to replace her. I don't know what I'm going to do because, you know, it's only been like in the last hour. So anyway, I guess the reason that I'm posting this, the reason why I'm saying these things and letting know that not everything is perfect, not everything is pretty, things go wrong, a lot. That's just a part of life and you, you have to push through it and you have to look to the future Oh, another thing. All my little turkey poults are flying out of their fence and they're pinned and they're everywhere and I'm just hoping they come back. Two days now they've been doing that and I have no way to keep them pinned up yet. But you know, it's going to be okay. God's in control. And bad things happen and things happen that, you know, make you feel sad. It's okay. I look around and I'm still blessed and we have to focus on the blessings. My little ones, if you ever see this someday, you have to focus on those blessings. Some people might look at this and say, it's just a bird. And to most people, it would be just a bird, or it would be just a kitten. <clears throat> it would be just a flower. But that's, in a way, so much more than that, because it all ties together. It's all woven in the fabric of our little life and our little bubble on this little homestead. And if you don't love your animals enough to feel for them when they're gone, you probably shouldn't be doing this. I'm not saying don't eat your animals. You know, they are a food. Miss Helen provided a service. She provided eggs. She provided turkey poults for me. She provided, you know, bug care for me. But if you don't have a certain amount of love and care for your animals, you shouldn't do this. 
And don't ever let those hard times get you down. Keep pushing through it. Feel what you got to feel. Tomorrow, you know, I'll be fine. Today's just a rough day. And I'm going to miss them. And I'm going to think about them a lot. And I'll probably maybe look for... I don't know if I'm going to look for another turkey hen. Or if I'm going to let Andy go to a new home. I don't think he'll do good by himself. Because he's used to having his, his, friend, his girl. So... I don't know. I have to figure that out. This might sound like gibberish, but, you know, it's okay. Why we do the way we, why we do this lifestyle. The other day I picked garlic. I forgot to video it. And I had these beautiful heads of garlic. And I was so excited. I had these big old smiles on my face. And people were commenting, you are so excited. And, you know, not everybody would get that. Because it's something simple. You can go buy garlic from the store. Why would you plant garlic on November 3rd and work all the way up to the end of June just to grow garlic when you can get it from the store? Because we grew it here at home. Because it's ours. Because we worked for it. Even though garlic's not that hard to grow. It did take me three times though. It was ours and we did it. And we don't have to depend on anybody else to provide it or to store to get it from because it's ours. And that's why we do the way we do it. That's why we live this lifestyle. That's why we suffer through loss from time to time but do you give up no if everything was gone today and I, as long as i still had my family i would still count my blessings and i would start all over and i would keep going and that's why we do what we do it's called self-sustainability self-provision taking care of your own and working for what you have don't ever give up on it no matter how hard things get don't ever have your days where you need to feel bad about it. Have your days where you need to mourn and feel sad for whatever animal, whether it's a cow, whether it's a horse, whether it's a chicken, whether it's a kitten, whether it's your garden. Sometimes the garden's a total failure. <clears throat> you just go right back and do it again next season. Never stop. Never give up. My little ones, if you see this in the future, I've got a stubborn bunch, and I expect you to remain stubborn, and I expect you to never give up. It's going to be hard. But I'm looking at chickens all around me. Andy left, but he'll be back. I'm blessed. This is a little teeny tiny spot in the middle of a great big world with a quiet little life that doesn't mean much to most people. But to me, it's a lot. It's everything. And as long as we keep plugging along, tomorrow will be a whole new and a better day. So anyway, I hope some of this made sense. I know I rambled a little bit. But for those that follow us, I knew that I needed to bring up Helen and I didn't know how I was going to do it. So that's how I'm going to do it. That's how I did it. But uh, I still count those blessings and I don't give up. And here comes Miss Rosie. Can you hear her quacking? Waddling along. When one blessing comes to an end, God will always provide new blessings. You guys have a great day on the homestead, a great day in the garden. Take care. Psalms 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Bye. Something. Hello, B. Is stealing sunflower heads. There's another one out here. And it's just, it's, this is not a normal bird. It's ripping them off and taking the whole head elsewhere. Hello, Bumble. Look at this sunflower. It has just mutilated this one. I got one little bloom left on it. There's a stem down at the bottom. There's another stem. There's a little bit of damage. There was a whole head laying here yesterday. And I was going to pick it up and now it's completely gone. It's not coming here as much as the small plants. Could that be a squirrel? I normally don't have trouble with squirrels because Mr. Mayor get, takes care of them. But...
I'm not seeing any of the same problem down here, so it's right up by my garden, close to that giant pine tree. I'm not seeing anything to up down here. So, you experts out there that happen to see this, I don't know. Squirrel, what do I do? It's just tearing the heck out of the ones down by the gate, and I'm afraid it's going to make its way down here. Let me know what you think. I need help!